So what we're making here is a microphone isolation box. And as you can see, we only need a few simple tools to make this. What we're gonna need is a tape measure, a standing knife, we've got a marker pen, and we've got a kitchen knife. What we have here is an acoustic foam corner cube. And as we can see, it's equal on all sides. This cost 11 pounds in the UK, including shipping. You can see it's a 12 inch cube. So it's 12 by 12 by 12. So that gives you an idea of the size. Now what we're gonna want is a small plate. This plate measures 21 centimeters or just over eight inches. So something round of that sort of size, that's all you need. And this is gonna be our opening. We're gonna use this to determine the size of our opening. So what I wanna do is just move it into the middle. So that's about right in the middle. What I'm gonna do is take my pen and I'm just gonna draw around as a guide. Now I'm gonna take a standing knife and I'm just gonna start the cut, holding the plate in place. The reason I've drawn around it is I don't want to move the plate accidentally and know where my center is. So we're gonna cut around like so. Let's just move the plate. And now we've got the basis, the start of our opening. Now we're gonna use a standard kitchen knife for this. So don't tell Philomena I borrowed this. And it's just about the same length as the width of the circle. What's important is when we take the knife and we put it here, we're gonna start cutting. We're gonna have that much spare at the back. Now, I don't want a knife that goes this long because then I might punch through and ruin my cube. So I need to leave a little bit. That's probably about the ideal, but my knife isn't quite long enough. So I'm gonna use what I've got. So that's gonna take this cube and create a hollow to about this depth when we go to the back. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start working it round. Turn it. Nice steady movement, small cuts, let the knife do the work. A little bit of elbow grease. Make sure it's cut all the way down to the end of the blade. Now what we're gonna start doing is we're just gonna grab handfuls and we're gonna start tearing. And as you can see, that came out quite well. Now what we can see is the blade is angled in. We don't want that. We want this circle to be pretty much straight down. I'm just gonna pull out any excess I can get already. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna carry on around the edge now. All I'm gonna do now is just pluck around the insides a little bit, pull off any loose bits. It doesn't need to be pretty. I'm not trying to make something pretty here. We want something that's functional. So you can spend as much time as you like on this part of tidying it up. I'm just gonna take my hand and rub it around and just rub off any loose bits. So turn it upside down, give it a tap. Knock any loose bits out. You could always hoover that out if you wanted to as well. We are making a bit of a mess. Remember, gentlemen, if you're using the wife's kitchen knife, clean it afterwards, hide the evidence. So that's the core thing we're trying to do with this mini sound booth is reduce the echo, the sound coming in. The only sound that can hit the mic now is the sound coming from the front of the mic. So that means any sound that travels past this when we're recording is gonna bounce off the walls and is gonna hit the sides and it's gonna protect the mic and that will get rid of echo. Different microphones are gonna have different attachments that come in. Now I've got what's called a magic arm and my microphone is going to come through the top and this is going to hang down. If you did this for a mic that was sitting on a desktop, this is going to turn the other way up and you might have a stand, you might have some different type of attachment. So you have to think about that when you're cutting in here. Now the important thing to understand is this will actually hold the microphone itself. This is the entry hole for the microphone. I'm just going to do a very simple incision about here remembering that I cut about this deep into mine so I'm probably going to want to come around here and I'm going to just push my knife in and then I'm going to do the same the mic's going to go through there this is actually going to grip it itself so that will actually become the clamping device of its, of its own if you wanted to be pretty we could go and spend 250, 300 pounds on the eyeball. This is gonna do pretty much the same job. I've seen a lot of people make these with foam balls, 
problem with that is you're buying foam balls, you don't know they're acoustic foam. This is acoustic foam. So when we make it this way, it's not a ball, it's not as pretty. It's gonna do exactly the same job. It's not gonna make any difference whether it's square or round. You're just isolating the mic from the sounds that are outside, essentially what you're doing. That's it, basically. We've just about finished with it. I'm gonna do a little bit more cleaning up so I don't get any dust in my mic. And we'll go and attach it in the studio and see what it looks like. So then what I've got is I've got a magic arm here. It's a very simple little device. I've got a short magic arm on a boom arm, which is attached to the wall. I have my microphone above me when I record. I've got my Sennheiser Mark 8 in there, which is a lovely little mic. One of the things we want to make sure of is that we don't have the microphone touching the phone. There's space all the way around the microphone. The only place there's contact is in the top. So we don't want it touching the back behind here. We want to be able to get our hands behind all the way around the microphone area. And that hangs above me as I talk, but if you've got a desktop mic, just reverse it. Very simple, very easy. One last finishing touch to add, so let's do that. We've just added our pop filter, attached it to the magic arm, run it down in front, and now we've got a fully enclosed sound booth with a pop filter. Total cost was £11. Now, obviously, if you have to buy the other attachments, if you want to do something similar, it's going to cost you a little bit more. Pop filter is going to set you back about eight pounds magic arm 12 pounds that's 20 pounds so that's just 31 pounds in total to create yourself a really adaptable and very useful very easy to make sound booth for your microphone to improve your video and audio recordings so this is the mic and audio test audio test one two one two three four three four i live in a high traffic area so when i'm recording sometimes it can be quite challenging i also have low level electronic hum coming from the equipment in the studio so this type of sound booth will reduce all that and it's going to stop all that echo so final setup shot you can see i've got it high up on the arm in the roof of the studio and it's just above me just out of shot that's my recording setup with the new sound booth so there you have it a quick and simple acoustic foam sound booth